Good evening, everybody. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 298, and tonight we're kicking off and continuing the PTK, oh, PTK theme, sorry. And this is going to be episode four, and we're featuring the Carlos Romano's brothers, who are Boston State and Sixto, and they've been on before. If you have not seen their previous episodes, I highly recommend you watch them. And they are, respectively, episode 85 and 86. We did a part one and part two with them, and they really went deep into their system and all that. So I highly encourage you if you want to know more about them, to go look at those episodes. Whereas today we're going to cover obviously some of their stuff, but that those two episodes really go deeply into you know what they created. So I, I would recommend you watch those. They, those are pretty good. Um, enough content to do two episodes. So there you go. Um, so again, you know the whole thing with this PTK theme is just to give people more exposure to the art who may know or not know. Um, see about, you know, for students and instructors to work together and what have you, and just bring overall more exposure and positive atmosphere to the FMA discussion and just overall to the community. Although we do want to take a, a moment of science. Unfortunately, we had a couple folks, brothers in the FMA community pass away. And those are GM Rene Latosa, he passed. And unfortunately, Guven, uh, Guru Slavin uh, Panik, uh, Pananik. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, I apologize. And so without further ado, I'm going to be bringing up Guru Baste and Guru Carlos. And here they come. And we hey. got Lance already. Hey, everyone out there. It's nice uh, to be here. Hey, guys. Hi. Welcome back. It's good to see you guys. So, hey, so you guys haven't physically seen each other for some time. So how long has it been and how was the visit? Uh, last time I saw him was way back 2020, pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic, okay. Pre-pandemic, yeah, it's been that long. Uh, Isn't that weird? We're yeah, saying yeah. like pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's how they define it here, probably. I don't know, but uh, yes. yeah, I, I was here in January of 2020, and uh, what's funny too is I had an extension because. I was at the airport already in January, and uh, I had a massage at the airport lounge. When I stepped out, all the air, all the flights were canceled, not knowing that actually a volcano just explode, exploded. Exploded. Okay. So well, I got to stay for a week more, just because I had to rebook a flight and everything was cleared out. But but yeah, our neighborhood was covered in ashes again. And that, really? the last time that happened was in the in the nineties when Mount Pinatubo happened. And interestingly enough. My brother and I were at a tournament for our Nice Philippines in the 90s at the SM Mall. And when I stepped out, like I was wondering why everything was hazy. It was actually raining ash. So that's the second time I've ever experienced it. Wow. Uh, and how, then uh, COVID happened. Yeah. How, would, um, how close the recent volcano eruption, how close is it to you guys, the actual volcano? Two hours away, I think. No, it's just an hour. Ah, the actual volcano, yeah, two hours. But it's Jeez. not and too far. Wow, wow, wow. And ash all over the place. Jeez. So what you guys, so you obviously, you got out there not just to visit your brother who you haven't seen pre-pandemic, but obviously um, it sounds like you got some training in, I'm assuming, right? Uh, uh, not so much this time because it's a, we have a family affair. So uh, that's the main thing that yeah. you had training on the side. Okay. But yeah, I only had it. I only got to go here for a week. Uh, you know how American work uh, environments are. They only give you two weeks a year, and I gave my one week for here. So yeah, uh, and I and luckily, yeah, I'm glad. I uh, have to thank you um, for inviting us because it's rare enough for us to be together broadcasting. It's even rarer for you to broadcast out there with the two of us together in one spot. So yeah, this is a very special thing. Yeah, yeah, you know what it was is I caught wind that you were out there. And I'm like, hey, I might as well try to take advantage of this and see if I can get them both on at the same time out, you know. So, yeah, it worked out. So uh, I'm glad it happened. And uh, we got some folks jumping in already. We got Lance Foyes saying hello to everybody. We got Matthew Lawrence who submitted a couple of questions. And we have, whoa, do you guys, I don't even want to, I'm going to let you oh, that's Virgil. That's Virgil. <laughs> Virgil. Okay. Virgil. All right. Oh, I see. Virgin, he's got just a cue at the end. Okay. All right, Virgil. Um, so then, all right. So um, 
way back, <laughs> way pre pre COVID, and we got Jesse. Um, how did you guys get started with GT? When, how, and well, let's tackle those two first before we get to the why, I guess. Should I? Yeah, you you met him first before me, so you better. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> our uh, I, I've. Um, our first instructor is Kuya Jun Pueblos mm. from Lameco, right? So he's the nephew of Leo Gahe. So we've been training a few years with Jun, then also later he introduced us to in Loneta, um, and we trained with Mang Tony for a few years. Mm. Then one day in Loneta, Leo Gahe, or SGT Leo uh, Gahe visits. And June Pueblos introduces us. And that was it. Uh, we got introduced to him, and he asked, well, would you like to be warriors? So, sure. Um, and he started training us. Sign me up. And, <laughs> and he would train us um, thrice a week, the whole, the whole day. Uh, during that time, I was taking my master, so my schedule was a bit flexible back then, so... That was it. We would train three times a day, and sometimes in in the morning we would train in Luneta, Calis Ilustrisimo, with Tatang or Mangtoni. Then in the afternoon, after training there, we would train with SGT guy. So okay, so was there? It sounds like there was a period of time when he was living there. I, I could be mistaken. I was under the impression that he lived more south in kind of negros or Bacola. Bacola. yeah yeah Bacola is in negros okay so so he that's his kind of home, home, base. home base but back then he was also doing some business ventures in in manila so before then and before the advent of cell phones or texting uh yeah he would call ahead of time like mm -hmm. uh hey Basti, will i'll be there a week now or actually i'm here <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, uh, and I'm staying wherever, you know, he, he has different places that he'd stay at, either at hotels or friends' places and all that. And and uh, then, yeah, next question would be like, yeah, are you training today or tonight or tomorrow or whenever? So, or, or the usual Sunday. And, uh, yeah, that, that's how it was. Uh, so, we, we... Okay. So then, so at that, at that time, were you guys kind of, so to speak, I guess, um, how can I word this? You know, like he's coming up to Manila. So were you guys kind of the first part of the group he formed there? Um, like were you, were you guys, was it kind of new in that regards? Because obviously it sounds like he had a group down below in Negros, but yeah. were you guys kind of like the new group far as the northern part of the Philippines? Yeah, from, from what I understood, just the way I know, because how would I know if whatever he does 24 hours a day, but... From what I knew was that we were his team in Manila, mm -hmm. and he also had Nonoy and, and uh, Romel. Romel in in Negros, um, and their and their other students out there. But they were the main students. Um, so wherever he went, he got to practice because Kali is his life. So he had to do Kali everywhere. <laughs> but it sounds pretty unique, though, for. Um, if I'm hearing you guys correctly, as far as the opportunity is concerned, that it sounds like he kind of formed this uh, a group around you guys, and um, and that is is that sound accurate or? Yeah, the 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 Calitrons and I sent you and I posted it before to Facebook. Like we, yeah, uh, he was a very interesting guy to meet at the start, and what made it more interesting was he suddenly like on my first or second training day he comes up with uh th this sheet of paper like welcome to bikini tirsha calitrons you will be our <laughs> new generation of spartans uh, of the modern age blah 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 you will be small but a uh, small but terrible group that will be turned into uh, warriors and all that see so it was unique he kind of started a new group around you guys so that's kind of uh that's kind of special matter of fact i'm going to pull up that paper you just referenced because I, I downloaded a bunch of um of the pics you sent me and it's on letterhead then uh from his grand yeah. magisterium all, uh... all right i'm hoping this is it i labeled everything so we're going to find out shortly 
Okay, here we go. So you tell me if this is the correct one. Can you guys see? Yeah, that? you got it. You okay. got it. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys take it from here, basically what it says. <clears throat> uh, let me go near. <laughs> oh, I'm just... No, that's fine. Um, yeah, basically, I still have it in my head, so I don't even need to read it. Uh, yeah, he essentially, like, compared us to the, Spar the resurrected Spartans of the modern age of sorts. Uh, within the coming weeks and months, you will be turned into, you will be, like, uh, turned into bits and pieces and transformed into these new warriors of the new age. Uh and, uh, and there's actually a, a, a basic curriculum. I didn't wasn't able to uh, yeah, yeah. to um, yeah, was, scan yeah. the second page, but it actually had a basic curriculum, and they even like came up with like uh, group tactics because you're calatrons. If you fight as a team, then uh, two against one, three against one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, interesting. And and all that. that. Okay. Um, yeah, but but essentially, essentially, he also. It was his first debut back in Manila, being stuck in the U.S. for quite a while, mm. and and I'm not sure if you saw one of the links I sent to you. That was actually a an article from H F H M magazine, the Philippine version, and uh, it says Pekiti Tirsha and Pekiti or P T K or even Kali was not known except for some Arnis aficionados who read Black Belt magazine, of course. Uh, internet wasn't out yet, but these words were foreign to everyone here, to be honest. Yeah, so, way back then. yeah, way back then. So we were kind of like his his introduction and Kali's introduction and Piquiti's introduction to the Manila scene. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Again, it, it sounds like um, he kind of made it a, a special thing. Uh, you know, surrounding you guys. Um, so it sounds uh, actually quite unique what he formulated with you guys. And I'm going to bring up what you just referenced again. Um, and that was the newspaper article. Um, here we go. Oh, yes. Thank God I marked all these. Usually I'm not that. Um, all right. Here we go, folks. We got more people jumping in. We got Guru Teru. We got Guru Ramon. All right, Tuan Chak. Okay. All right, and this is I'm not. If this is it, correct, Guru Baste? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, everything you see is there. Even the PTK logo. Yeah, all of those were still foreign to the local market um, because back then, if you talk about our niece in Metro Manila or or Eskrima. Uh, for tournaments, you could hear lightning, of course. You could hear uh, Lanada, uh, Laulan. Yuli uh, Romo and the clan, right? The Yuli Romo clan? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're our good friends. The Palasan Eagles and all that. So Murillo, the, Jason. With the tournament scene here. So, so I think Leo Gahe wanted to have his own mark first in the Philippines, then eventually like his big plan was like to invite the foreigners over and of yeah. course have a team to show for training and sparring. Yeah, because so I heard it, the dog, like I know he formed something called the Dog Eaters. I know the Pitbulls in New York he formed. Yeah. So it sounds like the Dog Eaters slash Calatrons was his formation of kind of the PH fighters. Does that make yeah. sense? I would say it's it's his gladiatorial pool of gladiators where he could draw from. So yeah. when when the dog brothers came out, then his creativity again came out, and he thought like, all right, I'm gonna call the Manila team Calatrons. I'm gonna keep it that way, and the dog eaters from Bacolod. Uh, oh, they okay. So they were from the okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, however, like I've it's it's been. Uh, brought up to me that some people actually mistake the Calitrons for being the same as the dog eaters or us being the dog eaters. Uh, but actually though, those were Rommel and Nonoy. Uh, if you, if you, if there's any chance to go back through Eskrima Digest um, archives, you'll see all of those because 
uh, GT Leo used to love to, to type away his ideas and, and, and thoughts. Uh, all well, the time. I got a couple of Lance just sent a couple of messages over here, which I'm going to get to. He's sent a couple of questions. But who came up with Cal Caltrons? Who um, was that his creation? That was his, yeah. That was his interesting. As something. far as we know. Wow. Regarding the dog eaters, I think we were having lunch one day and we were talking about some Filipinos eating dogs and, and then he said, eat. okay, let's make <laughs> dog eaters. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> as far as I remember, I may be yeah. wrong. I may be wrong. Yeah. But that's what I, know, I remember. It sounds, it sounds like a story like that could, it sounds like how, it could, how that could have manifested. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so with GT, here's this question is kind of fitting now. So this is from Lance. Was it an issue that you were trained with other masters while you were training with GT? So did GT have an issue with it? Um, no, me no comment. As far okay. as GT, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll speak since I still have my elephant brain kicking and uh, I still remember the details. But one one time GT pulled me aside while we were training, and he just kind of whispered like. You know, hey, uh, are you still training with the old man in Luneta? The old you know, man. And, and so it's like, and of course, I just kind of like, once in a while, and, and that was it. You know, he, he never asked again. Yeah, at least you're being, you're being honest. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that was it. Yeah, I mean, um, so you referenced there was a page two to that uh, letterhead, which had some of the techniques. So back then, what was it, what was he giving you? Uh, back then, because I'm assuming back then that's per, that's pre tri v. So was it those those say methodos, or was it 64 <laughs> ways of tax, or did he have just something maybe different, separate for you guys? Uh, it was all attribute development. Then you know what we didn't have names back then. Mm -hmm. uh, the contratos was still being developed at that time, so I really wouldn't know how to call it or what to call it. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of our training is power, power, timing, a lot of footwork, a lot of footwork, a lot of techniques. And pain management. Yeah, pain management. That's another thing. He yeah. used to really literally beat us up. So uh, luckily my mom didn't let me stop. She, she would just like shake her head whenever. Because we were doing it at the Carlos Hermanos gym, a.k.a. you know our family's family yeah. lawn. So yeah. yard. So. So and this is he had to be so if you're talking like circa 94, he 94. he's early 80s now. Am I yeah, 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 we met him when he was about 54, 55. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Still strong. Yeah. He was built like a tank. Yeah, he was built like a tank. I can see that was some thick, third years ago. Bone. He would get our barbell, remove the weights, and he would make a swing it. But before he would make a swing it, he would swing it first. So he would do it by he would show it by example. So that's why we respect him. Yeah, he, he would do knuckle push-ups and expect us to follow and and then he loved to do this warm-up. I'm not sure if I haven't seen it done lately in PTK, PTK circles, but back then he was big on the forward sweep. Like like the oh, yeah. like forward, the, the the dropping sweep, sweep and a sweep, spinning yeah, drop spinning, sweep. Yeah. So and that was our warm up. We would like go on and go on for I don't know 10, 15 minutes, just that until you feel dizzy and your legs are hurting and 10, 15 minutes. No, the footwork by itself was an hour. Yeah, and an hour or two. So one yeah. time he put us on a horse stance and went to take an overseas call and you guys are just, he would just standing. Take, standing there. Yeah, he would, take, he would take breaks from. He's like, I'm not gonna give you guys a clock. You know, he would take breaks from the call and like, why are you cheating? No, bend your knees and what? And we're like, oh my god, we did sign up for Tai Chi, but sure. Yeah. We, we <laughs> did, did a lot. Of, we did a lot of body tampering. Yeah. yeah, that was he was he was big on that back big then. That back then. And and I think people ask about sparring and. An empty hand. So back then, his his method of sparring with empty hands was slapping uh, with the slap. Everything from like the neck yeah, yeah. down is is fair game, and and you could grab. So you could grab the arm and snap the guy's back and keep him. You know. Yeah, but before we would do that, um, he will do the technique on us for a few minutes, 
uh, SGT guy had big hands. He, um, he was a very conditioned guy. Uh, you could say that he was very conditioned. He, he was very much into shape, mm. in shape. And if he, he hits you, it, it would hurt. It would hurt. Yeah. And how old were you guys? Time, back then, how old? Uh, now? No. How old were you guys when you first when you when you met him? Ninety four around there. I was twenty four. I think nineteen, and then turning to twenty. I think. Okay. All right. Still, okay. You're still young. All right. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So then, like, so is it fair to say his overall methodology for as far as what he was instilling in you guys was basically endurance, power, um, pain distraction, <laughs> and, and what, anything I, yeah. else? Um, yeah, because like uh, my hunch was like, and eventually it came out was that he was really prepping us for first he needed a team to show up in uh, case the dog brothers would show up and actually dog, dog markaida who joined us later he saw our the outline of our training and how and saw how we were training and he told us oh it looks like two hunts um focusing for you guys to fight also, when Doug came over, because he already had the training with Tuan Bill McGrath and Tom Vizio. Yeah. Oh, that and he had it met even late, uh, GT back then. It took a while until we got to get them both together. Okay. So he kept on asking okay. us, what, what is he teaching you? What is he teaching you? Show me, show me, show me. Mm -hmm. So we'd show him. But part of, part of the confusion back then at the start was like, I think he thought at first I was holding back. Because I didn't learn terminologies, you yeah, would never, say, never this or that. Um, mm. And that's why, honestly, when we had a group chat with some PTK guys with you, I honestly almost had a migraine because, you know, Sabayan, Dose Methodos, Triple V, and all this. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I it's honestly either, can't it's contract, all these. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll leave this to them. Um, because back mm. then, and then honestly, I would bug uh gt back then i was like when are you gonna teach us 64 attacks he does all that um but his response was like forget about that uh i want you guys to learn to be an intuitive fighter you 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 speak and and speak for yourself with your movements i don't want you to speak about the techniques with your mouth yeah we actually learned 64 attacks much much later so oh, but so but then but then dog talking to Omar Hakim and I think Phil Jalinas mm. eventually chimed in and also mentioned that it's not that we also didn't learn some 64 attacks, but we didn't learn it in sequence from start uh, to see. finish. Okay. Because okay. once in a while he would show Dago Pipunya. Yeah, which it is was that real and sometimes the break in, break the, out. The the way dog showed it to us, it was different from the way Tuhan did it. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like he, he kind of, um, without knowing for sure, he kind of just self-created just a program for you guys just to be acclimated for fighting and to be used to that and kind of maybe just curtailed what maybe others were getting for his curriculum, what it sounds like maybe, you know? Yeah, and, and, and his first his first test run was I, I sent you a photo with six and i think gt holding a trophy um so let, his first let me put that does ring a bell let me uh pull that up and then yeah that was his first test run the uh, tournament in bacolod okay here we go you tell me if this is correct yeah you got it okay i think I think even Shok Plaraga was even there yeah. in the far left when he was still alive and young. I'm sorry, who was that? Uh, Lolo Siok. Inocenso. Plaraga. Inocenso Plaraga. He, he passed away, what, last year or two years ago? From, uh, yeah, and that, that's Rommel beside me. Rommel Tortals there with the red shirt. Uh, mm. GT, GT loved to wear, uh, back then he loved to wear vests for some reason. Okay. And that's why he made, and he also yeah. made a vest specially for us too for the Calibron. He gave this to it's us. Still alive. 
happened. Yeah, decades old. So he, yeah, he's wearing that's, his that's a trademark there. Uh, I'm not sure if I sent you the other photo, but uh, Nene Tortal was also there in another photo. I'm not sure if I sent that to you, but no. it's the same. No. Check yeah, please. so that was the same um, yeah, event. So what happened here was like, it's kind of funny. I was already working at uh, the Shangri-La Hotel back then working front desk. So I was working the graveyard shift and I, you know, I didn't have much days off, but GT calls. I got to pick up the phone. No, actually, he sent. We, I used to have a pager back then. So um, he leaves a message saying, uh, "Be ready. Uh, fighters from America will be coming to Baholo. Dan Inosanto will be coming over. Uh, Mark <laughs> Dan will be coming over. He tried yeah, selling that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, wow, I gotta go here. It's a very historic event. You know, Dan's first time. I'm, I want to be there." Um, he said the Dog Brothers, Phil Jalinas is going to be there, uh, Mark Denny's going to be there for sure. I want you guys to meet them and train them. He didn't even say like train with them, train them. I want you to uh, be there, make sure that all these people from the Inosanto Academy will get to know you and the Dog Brothers will get to know you and probably fight you. I'm like, great, sure. I, I want to meet Dan. Well, Dan, Dan himself was like enough for me <laughs> to meet yeah, back then as well as the Dog Brothers. And, but actually, so he was, my brother was the only one who was available. So he went there John. and and John, John Malian, Lee. which was another Calitron, uh, was on the photo as well. Uh, little did he know that actually, no, he, uh, story was when he called me from Bacolod and he's like, hey, so how's the seminar? Uh, so it's, it's, it's Dan already there. And he's like, what seminar? I won a tournament. I'm champion. I'm like, what do you mean? You, know, you want a tournament? You're a champion. There's no seminar. I, as soon as I got here, they got here, just that was just gave him a stick and he fought. And uh, later on, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the champion. That's it. You know, he just wanted to fight. Because, as far as I know, in my recollection, when I hear Dan, Guru Dan's never been there. No, no, no. Oh, he's yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So just to, um, but that's awesome. You won a trophy. Wow. And um, not that it matters, but. Um, was it heavyweight? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think it was. But you know, Filipinos are lighter, so that's what I'm saying. Certain... That's what I remember seeing heavyweight, and the reason why I'm asking, what constitutes a heavyweight in the Philippines? Yeah, you know what? I have no idea. Yeah, and, and <laughs> anyone who's five six and over one fifty pounds. So if you're There's over no... five six, one hundred fifty pounds, you are a heavy. I'm, I'm just kidding, but that's my estimate. So there, there wasn't even a weighing scale. Okay, so they just look. Okay, you fight there. So, so that's the so, way. That's that's the way it was done. So just as a side note, because I I do have a strong memory, but uh, GT also loved back then, from what I remember, like. Spanish songs as well, uh, but but everybody knows he loves karaoke and loves to dance. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. he told me like, do you remember that movie, The Lambada? Yeah, yeah. The Forbidden Dance of Love. Uh, yeah. And then Sixto was telling me like, yeah, GT always wanted music, so he let the DJ play some music, and he played the Lambada. So I was forced to do the uh, some carenza. With the lambada playing all the the lambada playing in the background, <laughs> so, and GT yeah. did the same. So. <laughs> wow, that's um. So again, huh? Strange. Okay, so um. So who? Okay, so who actually did come over from the states? Uh, during that time, no one. So who came? <laughs> uh fighters from different clubs from so clubs nobody from the states came no, no. so was During, it maybe just a miss so maybe he confused it with just another event or possibly yeah possibly yeah, yeah okay possibly. That, yeah i mean that can happen but, um, but to give it the benefit of the doubt uh that kind of eventually happened in 97 or 98 where the, where, so when when Mark Denny American. came and Phil Jalina came, American. Leslie Buck, American. all of them were there except for, of course, uh, Dan. Yeah. But but everyone else that he mentioned were there, and I was like, oh, yeah. well, it's big, like three big, to four years late. Okay. Yeah, big names of the big names of Piketty back then. They were all there. 
So late nice, 70, circa late 90s. 90s. Okay. 90. Oh, 98. So you had what? Tuan Leslie Buck, uh, Tuan Phil. Mark Danny, uh, Phil. Yeah. yeah. Omar Hakim was there. Omar Hakim. Doug, Doug Markaida was there. Loki. Loki was Loki. there. Loki. Wow. Yeah, Romel Tortal, Nore Garucho. So all the big names that you hear right now that are two horns and, and have made their mark in the Piggy world, we're all there. That, that's the interesting part. That's even uh, even the second generation, third generation two hans, the newer ones, were even taught by former uh, members over there that weren't even two hans back then. So, for example, uh, Jas two -Hon Jasper, who was one of our teammates, the late the late Jasper. Jasper, was actually the one who recruited, if I got it right, uh, Mick Mick PTK. Oh, who's currently still in the Philippines, right? They're so yeah, yeah, yeah. From what I understand, yeah. it was Jasper who recruited him. So, what I'm saying is, like, people who came from that actual convention were eventually, I would say, one of the small group of prime movers that eventually probably helped disperse or or, or propagate the art. Eventually, oh, interesting, interesting. I want to get back to this, but I don't. I just don't want to forget the question, Lance sent. Okay, and Lance's second question was. Uh, so we're going to kind of go back in time. Um, what were the major differences in training in PTK compared with Kiro? That's Lance's question. Um, techniques, there were a lot of differences, of course. Um, Kiro had a more upright, shorter stance. The key thing, the, as the way we, we were taught, it was lower. And there, uh, there was a lot of triangle footwork, a lot of the side stepping, a lot of knife tapping. Uh, actually, it's it, it was very different. Although in some cases there are similarities because people can only move in so many ways, right? So, right? Like, um, uh, um, okay, I, I'd like to mention, uh, uh, Dean, you're doing Piper, right? Yeah. You're doing Piper. Remember, there's a move tumbler, the tumbler, right? Uh, well, yeah, major twirl. We got, I mean, we could, yeah, the tumbler, right? Okay, <laughs> that, that's in Pikiti. A version of that is in Pikiti. So, that's all I've got. I got that from Ron. You got to go down the floor, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but in Pikiti, they also do reverse. So, that the way we were taught, he, he did, get, he did give me reverse. I remember going, I had to go up and down the floor in that. Extension on one leg. Boom. <laughs> that's uh, a flesh. That, that's a flesh from fencing. So uh, when people ask that, uh, we move in, we only move in a limited way. So I guess there are techniques which are bound to be similar. similar yeah. yeah. So, so if, if, if I may add, uh, probably just to compare how we were trained through both, from, from both schools. Or instructors, this is my personal opinion on on or experience. Uh, was that you know the stressimo, of course, the when you're taught the on guard, you start from the what people call abierta, right? Mm. Oftentimes, uh, and that's fine. But for Piquiti, when I started with GT, I started with Sarada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. and most of the drills started in Serrada. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, during that time. During so, that time. so also the main difference, and I'm going to segue is to uh, when we were trained, and even up to now, um, majority of what we do with Kiro is that there's a feeder receiver or feeder Ooh, performer, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So he feeds you, but he feeds you most of the time from. The open position position as well because that's the most preferred or most likely that what you're gonna encounter um but likewise yeah ptk also assumes it's the first move well from how we were taught was that your your opponent would most likely do a forehand or a caveman yeah. Yeah. but you would be, you would be countering from this position or here or there from a serrata position so so what i thought back then was like this is kind of interesting because you know my, my my mind, my subconscious, whatever, learns from both sides. You yeah, know, so yeah. back, 
back then being a beginner, I'm like, I'm trained to hit from here, a number one. I'm trained to counter from here with a number one. Uh, and then for the stress in there's the feeder receiver where, you know, the, the guy, the trainer feeds you and you're free flowing with, with Piquiti, it's, it's, you know, you, you go with the pace. So it's, it's a more, exchange. it's a give back, give back, give back exchange, right? With the Piquiti. So that, that's also a main difference. Um, as regards to the, uh, uh dimensions, um, back then since uh again like gt kind of this is the way i kind of discussed this with my brother too before as well as uh dog back then markida was that gt also when 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 he trains a group specifically even with caltrons he created this group with a specific thing in mind was that he looks at the attributes also of the people these kids are young these kids were varsity athletes we most of us were. Um, we played a lot of soccer. We did our other martial arts. So our training also involved a lot of high low. So jab high, jump, and then low squat. Okay. So then our legs were super conditioned. Um, I remember sometimes like people would be vis visiting from from abroad and be be joining and were older and would just stop without even. Yeah. yeah, a few seconds. Feeling their knees just not like to fall apart. Yeah. yeah. So, but 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 with, but with KI, I loved it because you know you're you're just. You're, yeah, you're upright. I, I loved it too. Yeah. Well, well, I loved it both because I was young and I yeah. loved to jump yeah. and I loved to run and I loved to whatever, but but also you also get tired, right? So I'm like, okay, this is my yeah. working break. <laughs> that, that's what stuff um, for me. Just, just what you mentioned, like when I was doing PTK, it was definitely lower and where it's, we're more upright in uh, KI. And I was like, wow, man, I'm not feeling any pressure on my knees. Like, this is kind of nice. You know, <laughs> just like this. you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not getting home and being like, what the hell just happened? You know? yeah. um, but now is it fair to say though, and I, I don't want to assume I'm right here, but was he giving you more GT giving you more stick based stuff? Obviously in Kiro, you're getting more sword stuff. Is was is that accurate? Hmm, I never thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I would say back then, um, he did show us sword. He did show you some uh, sword. Okay. All right. But but in terms of like what we trained in just because back then the dog brothers just kind of came out in terms of the VHS and everybody were, were all thinking about how do we beat the dog brothers? So it's stick fighting yeah. and all that. How do we counter that? So, so, so yeah. And also just as a side note, you see all these like, uh, the Talibongs and the Ginun things mm. back yeah, then. It was quite new. Yeah. Uh, GT, if I remember it right, just, established a relationship with the blacksmith uh, who actually I think recently uh, or maybe last year I think he, he passed, passed away and the son took over with his own designs but but that was the advent of that uh, because mm -hmm. even even you know, things in Metro Manila was not you know whenever we took it out some 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 TV director even saw it and was like oh that looks so unique I want to use it in my oh, TV show the, the well known yeah okay okay yeah, back then. Uh, oh, I, I have a story, okay? Uh, sure. This was, we were training, the, there were new swords, uh, new given things. Oh my God. GT used it for a break in, break out drill. Blade to blade. Blade to blade. So he kind of ruined the pair. And oh man. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yes. <laughs> so so that, was, that, that was when he was still beta testing. Uh, and then I was there. Them. And, and I, I, I saw that. I could still hear the words in my head, like uh, whoever he did pair with was like, oh, let's do contact. Let's do contact. And was, as soon as they did contact, bang, 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 bang. Then, then when they looked, he put his finger up. Oh, my God. You could see like yeah, it's like a edges, quarter yeah. inch, half inch, quarter inch, like break. on the. Mm. You know, so, so those were the beta test portion. Probably he gave feedback to the to the blacksmith after and whatever you guys see right now as more commercially available are the evolutions of what but but uh he made a strain i mean the carenza 
using bladed equipment. So okay. real bladed equipment. So. Yeah. And yeah. even knife training, he would make us use real knives. Yeah, especially with knife tapping. And speaking of, again, the differences between the KI and uh, PTK training was uh, the knife tapping from this position versus the way we were taught back then with Kiro was like here. Okay. So you parry and a hit to the neck versus here or so there. Bring it, bring, it, bring it down, this passing through center. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, so again, I was telling myself, this is great, you know, because yeah. like my subconscious, because I train both all the time, will not get confused. So maybe if my hand is nearer, then uh, I go first or whatever. Um, or actually, we had the privilege of doing both. And we understood that we understood them, bringing them from the source. And, yeah. and also doing it for a long time that, you know, your body won't get confused because you always do it. So uh, actually, we can shift between the two drills on yeah. doing this and... Yeah. That's funny. So one, I mean, so stopping before comes to center, one bringing it through center. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got a question, another question here. From, okay. So this is, this is a question from Virgil. How did the, so this is in regards to when Americans did come over. How did the American practitioners treat the local practitioners when you all got together? Was there a lot of uh, rivalry or um a friendship or or intention so that's his uh that's his question uh mark was nice uh, we, we mark took Denny? him out for pizza mark, mark, Denny. mark Denny was nice yeah and he was a super health buff he even poured some whey protein on his pizza he needed more protein and i'm like don't you just want to pour that in water like uh i need my protein now so i just poured it on like uh, cheese garlic and cheese pizza okay, did, did Frank, no, they were they would share a lot of stuff. Like for example, uh, Loki, he was my partner in some of the drills, and he would show me uh, this is a more a more efficient way to do an elbow. Uh, this is more more sila. So mm. they would share. Omar, Omar would show me some of the jewels of uh, sila. I, I'm not sure what you call it in sila. The, jew oh, the jewels, the jewels, jewels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he would show me that. Yeah. That's right. They all had the Anasano background, so they were getting to see a lot the Jurus from. So it's, the, it's also Suwanda. Suwanda. Uh, Herman Suwanda was the Haramount. Paul the Thors. Yeah. You were getting the Jew. Yeah, I mean, not that um, Herman Swan didn't have Jews, but yeah, yeah, Paul yeah. the Thors. Buta Nagara. It sounds like you probably you guys were getting. If I had a guess, you know. Uh, I forgot. It's not Bukti. I forgot the name of what he showed. One form. Uh, but but during that time, huh, I saw Gahe use some of his silat. He's good. He's good. Yeah, He's I tell good. you, it's you know what I came, you know what I came prevalent to is his work with uh, Joffrey. But watching like uh, watching Tuan Bill's empty hand stuff, and you see it in there. It's like the kicking and the hand. You see the silat. I mean, you know, but uh, Tuan Bill made it that you know Gahe. Well, definitely being exposed to Joffrey, but he mentioned that guy hey, got it. I had it already just through his previous training, all that. When he met Joffrey, it was just kind of a complimentary sort of speak, you know? Yeah. Um, if I remember, he taught me one technique, which I, after applying it once, I popped somebody's uncle, uh, sorry, ankle, yeah. popped really hard. So I stopped applying it after it's too kind of dangerous so. yeah some of that stuff is hence the you know i'm they call them dead patterns now because how hard how hard can you go without you know breaking something or uh yeah. on somebody like what's the threshold you know what i mean um so it's not like they were all uh pretty they're all pretty friendly working together i mean yeah some... everybody was here in the u.s to have fun and uh, there's that excitement to be like hey you know, like, uh, yeah, I can't imagine they're, they're gonna come over there and be jerks. I mean, they're in a foreign country; they're outnumbered. I mean, yeah, well, well, it's it's all the same. I mean, like you go to the U.S., you go to the Philippines, right? There's people yeah. of different personalities. Uh, yeah, some but, are nice, some are. But majority were okay. Majority were I mean, okay. There's always a bad ball somewhere, uh, sure. But who, who's a Texan who 
actually got married. Uh, yeah, even one guy found love. Love. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he married the uh, one of the receptionists at the uh, no one of one of the uh, workers at the hotel. Hotel. Yeah, he no. was very nice. Oh, uh, Rene, I think, or uh, no, no, Rene is a Mexican. Oh yeah, yeah. He he was a cop from uh, Texas. He was a prison guard. Yeah, he, he was. Oh, Reyes. His last Reyes. name was Reyes. And yeah. whenever I asked Leslie about him after, it's like he doesn't train anymore. He must be like busy with this. He, he doesn't train know, anymore. Like, yeah. he, he got that girl and got, <laughs> got married. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was very yeah. nice. Uh, her name nice. was Remy, if I remember it right. Okay. I remember that. Yeah, oh, I remember wow. that. And she was a nice girl too. And you know, of course, we were kind of protective. We we want to make sure, you know, that this yeah, girl was gonna come over there and just act like yeah, that. yeah. But, but but we knew we knew this guy was very sincere and no, he even talked to us. Oh yeah, he actually he talked to us. Hey guys, I have pure intentions. Yeah, that, that's I how much of a gentleman that guy was. He even walked and even when us, even yeah. when Leslie and the rest yeah. of the Texan team uh came oh. to Manila after the Sioux Big Bay Convention, I took them around. Mm. I took them to lunch, out to lunch and drove around. And then this guy, like, again, pulled me aside, like, hey, uh, I just want to really want to make sure, you know, uh, uh, because you guys know Remy. I'm like, we didn't really know know her. He just probably mm. saw us all the time talking to her because she's a nice girl. And uh, but but I have pure intentions, you know, I really want to oh, marry her. Like, okay, good. That was honorable. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right? One thing I just realized that a lot of the guys there were very well educated. Huh? Like Omar was a math- I think a mathematician. Not any lawyer. <laughs> lawyer. Yeah. Uh, Loki has a PhD. I'm not sure if it's physics or math. Um, Rene is a is a graduate of MIT. So yeah, yeah, right. Uh, so these are right. right well. So let's let's just back up just a bit. So who was the crew? So far as the Calatron, so you two was Doug Marcada part of it, or was he in and out? Or... He came later. Yeah. So if you saw one photo that I sent you, the one where we had yeah, all shirts off, pull that up right now, Matt. With, right. That, with Adam Sagetti. Okay. Let me just yeah. okay here. I got a few far as like you guys, but here let me um let's see. Yeah, the one with uh, no shirts off, with all shirts off, with Adam Sagetti. All right, um, what, what, which one's this one now? Oh, that 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 was with uh, that was at our, at our house yeah. with uh, that that's the relatively later version. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Okay. So let me try to get. Um, let me try to find because I I did down uh, I did mark them all. Let me just see. It might be me just pulling up a few here. Um, Pick two. This could be it. Let's see what this brings up. No, that's not the one. That's because uh... I did take it's one with Doug a... in it. Yeah. Oh, it's probably on a link, not not the natural photo I sent you. I did. Yeah, there, there, there. I did. Um. You did download the photo from the link. Yeah, there were there. Yeah, there were a few like I, I had to download. I remember that. Um, let's see with this one. Actually, you know what? Let's. Here's one. I wanted to show this anyhow. This could actually be it. But I wanted to show this one. So this is what was this one? This is one I wanted to pull up before. Oh, that, that's the first day dog met Tuhan. Okay. Him. Okay. Okay. Uh, and he was teaching us Malayo Sibat. Look at that. Wow. Jeez. And that's like 94 or thereabouts. Yeah. 94, 95. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow. Man. Neat pictures. All right. Let me just see what. Uh, I might have to go back. I could have sworn I got this. So let me see what this one. Here's another one I wanted to also show. This could be. What about this so one? That was the first time they met Leo, GT, in, yeah. at Loneta. Yeah. Oh, that was the day of. All right. The very first time with uh, that's June Pablos right to uh, left. Who's the taller guy there? Huh. Yeah, I can't remember anymore. Like. Wow. Well, he's okay. Let me. So all right. Let me. I'm gonna go back. What pick um, should I be getting? So there's there's one that's um, 
yeah, we're all shirtless. <laughs> okay. That I would say it was uh, would be the, the probably the original group. So while you while you're pulling, uh, you know what? I got it. I thought I had uh, downloaded this, but let me see if this is the one you're talking about. Um, okay, here we go. Let me see if this is it, and you can tell me. Uh, no, that's uh, that's from the convention. That's that's uh, uh, Alfred Sesse. Alfred Sesse, and uh, that's Sixto, and I think uh, Phil Jolinas, and Phil Jolinas is at the back. That's uh, that's the usual early morning GT training. He loves to train six, five, six, five, six, five, five in the morning, and uh, yeah, that, that was already. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the convention. Here, I'm going to look for you, but we got another question that just came in from uh, while well, I look for this. Um, from Lance, did you guys ever meet Greg Aland? No, not, not, not really. We, we, we always heard the name, but not Yeah, really. he was a good guy. Um, all right, I'm looking. For, okay, so this is... All right, I got the articles, I got that. And then you're saying this is another shirtless pick, correct? <laughs> yeah. 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 Why am I not? Yeah, that, that was the Dallas Sekeri. Oh, okay. And um all right, here's the here's the one I have that's it sounds like it looks like it's Guy Hay and somebody. Right here. Uh you guys tell me this is but i'm not seeing any um here all right you guys tell me which one this is here but this is one of you guys working with um the guy oh that's a video link oh that's me oh that's you okay and that, he had more hair back then and uh gt and i were both that are well, relative prime. GT even got better after that. He he uh, confined himself in a natural holistic center. He just ate fruits for thirty days. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't and he lost he lost all the belly fat. Wow. Huh. Okay. And, uh, a lot of people were bugging me years later, asking me, "Hey, weren't you the one who picked up uh, GT from that, you know, very remote area?" <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. he, he, he asked me to bring him like two kilos of bananas. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I had where, about, where, where was that? Uh, I don't know if uh, I it was know. in Marikina or somewhere or, or okay. that area, Antipolo or somewhere. But he called me. I thought we were going to train. But he said, like, just come over. But I need two kilos of bananas and oh, uh, two funny. kilos of some other fruit. And I'm like, okay, are we going to eat, all eat that? And like, just, just bring it. You know, and uh, when when I got to the place, I thought he was gonna step out. He didn't even step out. I just had had it over the fruit, over the fence, and he's like, "I'll call you later. I'm kind of busy." So I'm like, uh, "Yeah," but 30 days later, he showed up, and he was like, "Slim." No so, kidding! Wow. And then we got um, while we were just talking about some of the Americans that were there, I do have. Um, we have this one here. Oh, yeah, Phil. Yeah, that was after my uh, sparring, sparring with Phil. So the, the weird part here is like back then uh, GT was on, I would say, Filipino less linear time mm. schedule. It's more like go with the flow, like everybody spar now or whatever. We didn't yeah. we know there was sparring that's gonna happen someday, but we didn't know which day. Right. So we didn't sleep. Yeah, after the we didn't sleep. So the the Galatrons the night before, we thought like, all right, uh we've been here for so many day, days, let's go together and you know, enjoy ourselves. Right? Yeah, we were let's let's drive to the city and then enjoy ourselves. So we went out for drinks and uh and didn't sleep and still did the usual uh, five AM uh, <laughs> Training and, and then after that we were all like you know we all we all threw up. Well, before yeah. that though, we, yeah, we were all we burnt all out. So we're so we're all like we asked 
we ask people around, like, did you hear anything about what's going to happen this afternoon? And like, nothing. All right, well, let's have a heavy lunch then. So we yeah. drove downtown again for lunch. Wow. And then guess what? When, when, when the van was about to park and I opened the door, I could hear GT's voice on the microphone, like yelling my name. Like, Basti, where are you? Phil Jalinas is already suited up. Are you scared of him? Are you scared to fight Phil? Are you hiding? Are you in your room? I need you here now. And I, I literally ran from the van park, uh, parking area to the ballroom where it was. That was my warm up with, with the food sloshing in my belly. <laughs> uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I wasn't much uh, afraid of getting hit. I was more afraid of like thinking I might throw up behind the mask. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that would be Which, we, which we did anyway. So, yeah, well, uh, one of us. One of us actually uh, sprinted to the one of the trash cans after his fight and threw up. So everybody yeah. threw up. Everybody threw up. So how long did your okay? So ninety four. About how long did your your guys train continue with him? Two thousand. Two thousand one. Yeah. Yeah. About until two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah, about two thousand. Yeah. Two thousand. Uh, Forty. About two thousand. Two thousand. And uh, for me, life happened. Uh, yeah, it's something happening. Just happened in life. So, uh, yeah. In 2001, I left for the U.S. So. Well, there you go. I mean, so there, there <laughs> life does. Yeah. So what? Uh, so what did he? I mean, what uh, overall in those years? Like, what did he stress to you as far as tactics? Like, was there common themes he, he imparted in you guys? Actually, for Tuhan, huh? for me, it's more mindset. He would keep on telling you, you're a warrior. Think of hurting your enemy. Don't think of him hurting you. Hurting you. Overall, all it's more, more mindset. Be the attacker. Be the attacker. That's what he says. Okay. So for each of you, what lesson did he lesson... It could have been a conversation, something something that he really instilled in you that really resonated with each of you that to this present day still manifest in you from him. For me, well, it's two things. One is conditioning, number two is pain. If you take up martial arts, you have to be fit enough to do it. And you have you really have to expect pain and also give pain. Mm. For you, Bob. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and that's yeah. In retrospect, true. Um, I agree um, because you know everybody has all the similar in terms of martial arts. A lot of people do martial arts now and what, but but I think like what's missing in a lot right now is yeah, um, uh, being true about the reality of pain. It's the you know giving pain and taking pain um uh, and also uh my mind was kind of like working when you when you started asking that question because you know you, you just sit with him for days for years and mm -hmm. you know he loves to talk so there's tons of stuff yeah. that kind of like got into my subconscious uh, from like you know we believe in life not in death we don't believe in health not in sickness and all that you know i without even me thinking about it it's it's ingrained in my head uh but probably what that means is martial arts is a lifestyle mm -hmm. it, for him and for us we're, we're different from like we don't enroll in a martial art to just like treat it as a you know like a, a orange theory class or a fit uh fitness class and i'm done i've done my workout i've raised my heart rate to that i'm healthy no, it's more of like a real lifestyle. We live, breathe, and eat, and think martial arts. That's us within that community. That's the type of people we are. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I totally agree. You know what I mean? It really it really is a life. It really does become a lifestyle. You know? Yeah. Um, so many ways. Um, and, you, know, you know, the people you meet. and um, Yeah, it's, it's, it, it really is. He's, he's absolutely uh, correct in it. Uh, I would say the, the only drawback, though, is like, the way we were trained too was like uh, speaking of silat was like i think the influence the most silat influence that i think i ever got from him was more of the the hand tempering 
foot hand hand hand. Hand. okay the foot locks yeah yeah the foot locks but but to me because i i love to hit and i'm not much of a locking guy back then but but to me like you know and i used to love to break bottles and coconuts because they used to have these tv shows showing these kung fu guys i'm like i can do that too whatever and i'd break a bottle done but but i i was like to me it was normal what I didn't know was like even years later of stopping, maybe two years, three years of stopping training, was like going back to civilian life. That one time I was just having a discussion amongst, you know, like grad students, me and between my grad student friends. And of course, there's there's arguments, there's discussions, there, there's counter, you know, like theories and all that. But I held a champagne glass or a wine glass and I, I just wanted to move it. It's like my, my 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 classmates class was on the way it was blocking something and my hand was so tempered that it felt like so light that i actually broke it with my fingers and people thought i was angry <laughs> i'm like yeah. i'm like oh no i'm like now people think i'm angry but it yeah. felt like a feather to me yeah it, yeah and right due to your condition my hand yeah. that tempered and you know i was used to like hitting hard stuff and grabbing hard stuff so. yeah yeah so that was the problem Going back to civilian life was, you know. We got another question from Lance. Any observations regarding Kiro Talongboa with PTK triangle footwork? Good question. Oh, tatlong, tatlong bao. Tatlong bao. Tatlong bao with the PTK triangle footwork. Good question, though. Hmm. Uh, well, similar movement but execution is different and also the way it's trained probably mm. um because although there's also uh, the way we were trained and also the way dog showed it to us too um was when you do triangle reverse triangle or forward triangle or whatever they call it now male and female triangle mm -hmm. you know it, it was a drill in itself right you do it as a warm-up or hundreds of times but the main difference too is that we were taught to lift the knee so as you do your forward triangle your knee and you scoot it to the side and scoot this okay. to the side and you go back and knee and all that okay. Right, so um, we don't do that in Kiro because yeah, the high stepping. I definitely seen. Yeah, you heard you guys high that high knee. I definitely, definitely have seen that. Yeah. And, and I was doing that warm up once when I was lifting weights when I was in Boston in school, and some kid walked up to me thought I was doing Muay Thai. I can see that. I can see why he would say that. I can see that. Yeah. 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 And um, he's got a. Actually, um, actually, he's got a, he's got the same question here I have for you guys. Um, let me just see. You know what? We can ask it now. It's fine. But I, I had the same question, and his question is, uh, what have you incorporated from PTK and in, and applied in your guys' system? Um, power. Yeah. Definitely like one of the hallmarks, if you ask about the brand hallmarks from what I understand and what we tell our, our, our students is, you know, we emphasize a lot of power mm. um, because with no power, like your, your stick strikes not going to matter without power, like, you know, you're, with, with modern weapons, you know, machetes, I'm not talking mm. about swords, but machetes, yeah. you need some muscle to wield a heavier machete than a balanced sword. Right. So, mm -hmm. or even a tomahawk, or something like that. These are a little bit heavier weapons, modern, modern weapons, modern implements, and then that's what Carlos Hermanos is. It's more of a modern uh, martial art, uh, and that's how we differ from like all the other. How that's how we differentiate it from all the other classical traditional arts that we learn. Um, so, so I would say, yeah, GT Leo, luckily, and Cali Dog. I really don't know his real name sorry Kali but I love you but I you know Kali dog is his sign and is his uh is his profile name on Facebook um, yeah it's it's Doug though his name is Doug, yeah, Doug. all right Doug he's yeah. based in Texas yeah so he's got the blades 
blades and sticks and blades uh yeah yeah so yeah. texas guy Texan yeah. guy so yeah so whenever i posted whenever i post uh circa 90s photos and videos of, of gt leo he is all like yeah reminding me like yeah you're lucky you know that that that's gt at his prime you know uh, it's a different flavor of gt mm. so so and that's where we came from too because like gt would join us in training um and he's like what are you trying to hit you know are you trying to hit a teddy bear no you're gonna fight a real man you're or gonna fight a bear you know get harder <laughs> So, Power. like for hours until like, and then his greeting to us wasn't, you know, like, no, the first thing he would do before he would shake our hands is like grab our hands and take a look at our palms and check like, I don't see any wounds or any Blinders. calluses. <laughs> you got baby hands. You're lying. I haven't been training. Yeah. And he'd slap it and go like, give me 100 on the tires. You know, so that was his emphasis. So, um. So yeah, power definitely for for CH is one of the influences. Mm. Um, power training and all that. Of course, we've had eventually our own evolution into how to train it, but but the emphasis of it, the mentality of it, uh, we've retained. Anything you want to uh, share to that, Guru Sixto? Uh, well, I just, I just a memory just came out. I remember. I think I had tears. I was crying when. We, Tuhan was teaching us because of the pain. Uh, it would make you do a technique, okay, counter to the knife, a, count, a knife counter, slap on the shoulder, slap on the stomach, and he would make us do that for half an hour. I don't know. It was something I just remembered. It was all pain. Yeah, you'd have like hand marks on your body. And the fact that we did a lot of hand tempering, all that seal out hand tempering, you know, or hand tempering we could break coconuts back then yeah, even uh, up to now and, i used to break coconuts the and, whole thing eh? the whole thing and break bottles oh, and wow, all that wow. so um before we segue would give us a most memorable story with gt and oh i remember uh gt would ask Bastet to massage him yeah <laughs> he was, uh, was Bastet's baby so Bastet would massage him then he would say Bastet that's too like more then he would try to hurt the guy that oh, okay that's correct 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 then more 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 so yeah he was a masochist of himself <laughs> well <laughs> one thing is uh one of the mirrors, he's a tank he was built like a yeah. tank um you have to give him credit for that he was in shape he was conditioned he was built like a tank yeah, yeah, but 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 eventually, like you know, I get tired because like what happened is like he loves to train early in the morning, so we start early in the morning, mm. straight into lunchtime. So lunchtime we get a break. This was when we were already uh, training at the uh, Carlos Hermanos gym, uh, which is our backyard. So then we'll have lunch, you know. Then after lunch, of course, you got more stories during lunch and whatever. Then he's gonna feel like I want to take a siesta. So take a siesta for like, take a nap for like 30 minutes, to an hour. Then once he wakes up, he go like, Basti, I think I have a tight shoulder. You know, that's when I, I know. Okay, it's my job now to <laughs> whatever. But uh, but one 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 trick I learned was like, yeah, he loved the pain. I would like look for pressure points, and he's like, yeah, there, 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 there. No, 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 there, there. Yeah, so. But eventually I found the most painful ones. So when, when I got like really dug into them and finally I made him give up, he's like, oh, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. So I'm like, yeah. I think that was about the tire rack, it's still there. Yeah, and then the tire rack, uh, yeah, it's literally memorable for us. It's like our PTK uh, GT Leo Gahe monument that's still standing in our gym. Was because like uh, one day he really just, and again, you know, he, 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 he focuses his training, he structures his training, not only based on the structure of you know, your body structure, your mentality or whatever, and also think of what he can make better of you, mm. but also look around in the actual environment. So when he looked around, he's like, oh, there's a log. I'm like, all right, GT, what do you want me to do with the log? I, didn't, I was waiting for him to tell me no. And when I looked back, he was actually carrying... 
Galag himself. That is like, here, bam. That is like, let's put this here. Like, dig a hole. <laughs> Tie this to the other pole. So, and get those tires. You know, put them like donuts. Stack oh, okay. them up. So he was doing it himself. Yeah, so, yeah. and then those tires are still there. So whenever we see it, I'm like, wow, you know, remember the days when he was that young and he, he was, was that strong, mm. carry this deadlift, this log and put it there. I mean, like he was in his fifties. Um, but Another question from Lance. And we got Paulo, hey. Uh, okay, from Lance, any impressions you have of the way PTK is taught today as compared to how you were taught, considering the number of PTK branches at present time? Uh, to be frank, Lance, I'm sorry. I wouldn't know. I really haven't checked the way they train. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't know. I think yeah, it's, um, and I only know this from doing the interviews, but some are, are more on the, the Tri-V formula of the newer. And then like Juan Bill, for instance, Definitely, Dose Methodo, 64 was attacked, Seguidas, the Contratas. Um, we're, one of the episodes is going to be somebody just talking on Try the, and just so people, but um, again, I think that if somebody here knows better, they can chime in and say something. But I just know some of the new guys, I guess, are doing the Try V, you know, that came maybe 2000 on per se, you know. Yeah. So, but I hear I got a question for you. When he when Guy came to me, did he? My understanding is that him and GML Susamo did meet in Lanetta Park. Is that true? Oh, uh, Tatang. Yeah. 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 Um, Tatang would say, um, yeah, uh, Leia's my friend. Uh, we would I would show him techniques. So that, that's directly from Tatang. Oh, so they, they so they chatted and talked it up, and I, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. sure. Yeah, Luneta was, you know, like it, whenever we went there, there, there's just like people from everywhere visiting. So, so yeah, and, and that was a welcome thing for Tatang too, because he was old and people would come yeah, and visit. Um, I just I heard, Ed, and I don't know if this is true, it's just what I heard that PJ Edgar. Years ago, brought Lee up there, and I guess that was the first meeting of of the two. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, Possibly. Yeah, I don't know how far its history goes. But uh, all right, so here we got a got a couple of questions from Matthew Lawrence. Okay, his first question is: What drills or exercises did you experience in the multiple styles that you considered the essentials? A lot of maybe the uh, Amara Amara drill. Ah, sorry. Um, Amara is Carenza. Carenza. Uh, in KI, it's, we, we call it Amara. Um, I guess in PTK we, we would call it shadow boxing. Ah, sorry. Or just no stick. Uh, shadow boxing. Yeah, that's what you would call it back then. I guess a lot of that. A lot of Carenza. A lot of footwork drills. A lot of uh, feeder. Countering drills, yeah. I, I guess those are uh, sim uh, similar drills. I can think of what else. Yeah, and then from from the PTK side, from GT Leo back then. Although we also did it in the Meco and KI too, was of course different ways of how to use the tire. So that was our punching bag. Okay. Different ways of how, and then also GM, uh, also Mang Yuli Romo. You know, who would also teach us on Sunday, show us, do this, do that. Uh, don't do this, do it that way, you know, because he was like very heavily tournament oriented back then too. Mm -hmm. um, but but they have their own flavors, you know, how to mm -hmm. stack it, where to hit it. Um, uh, also different implements, you know, some, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so it could just vary in, in different ways. It's just like asking probably in boxing, like, you know, everybody hits a bag, definitely, in, in pro boxing. 
what if you ask Gus Diamato and Fred Roach? Yeah, right. You're going to get at it. Right. That's a good point. Gus yeah. has numbering, whatever. And yeah. 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 That's where the differences come. But at the at the end of the day, you know, the most essential part is like for us is we have to hit tires. That's the most mm-hmm. basic thing that eventually we, we, we retain with Carlos Hermanos. Okay. What, um, he's got his second question is when you guys spar, what systems do you gravitate towards of your past? I, and uh, I'm just going to add something to this. Let's, you know, let's give, let's put the question as far as blunt weapon translation, edge weapon translation as well. Hmm. You know what? I never, I, I really never thought of that. Me, whatever comes out, it comes. Out. Yeah, I, I think I think it was more out. relative when we were a lot younger. To be honest, like for example, whatever comes out. we started with Lameco and we were very Lameco oriented. Even when we were already training with, with KI, then when the more we trained KI, it became KI, and then trained with Gahe, it became more Gahe, then Dog Barkaida came and he had his own flavor. Then later on, I figured like, hey, my my chicken, he, Omar Hakim used to call it the chicken footwork, you know, because uh, um, they used to love to do that pumping thing. So, um, and I did, okay, right? I did see my older videos, like me fighting uh, RJ, uh, RJ, who's Dog's brother. And I was like, oh, okay, my moves were more Gahe and dog here you know mm. it's less it's less ki but but as we've trained for decades you know that's all in the subconscious it's just very intuitive you know like i said you know we train this way to do knife tapping for years we've trained that way to with the direct stuff for years and him with other systems as well that you know like definitely you know when, when you fight you don't think about it I um, mean, it, it's, it's, it's more of like, probably, again, my analogy of boxers. A lot of these pro boxers have gone through different trainers before their current trainers. Yeah. So if you ask them, like, which is the most dominant of all that you've learned that you use now, their answer would be like, it's me. You know, it's, it's Pacquiao's Pacquiao, and then Mayweather's Mayweather, right? Regardless of whatever they learned in high school, uh, what what's dominant now? I don't know. You know, I just feel like what's what comes out and what's well, possibly right now it's more for keto it's, it's more, because that's what we train more right now. Yeah, more likely um, keto too. So uh, and also, and also, I'm I'm not 19, 18, 17 years old anymore. I yeah, I'm more, I'm more you know like <laughs> with the with the knee movements up and down and so you know I. I I don't think I could do those things that GT Leo made me do when I was 19 and 20 and 21, jumping up and down an hour. So, it sounds like, but Edge Weapons, I would, I mean, if I had a guess with you guys, you guys are probably more in the KI lane if with Edge Weapons, right? Yeah, I would say yes. I'd yeah, say now, yes. But maybe oh, if you were right. stick in your hand, would you gravitate more to the Compo PTK? Uh, probably. Yeah. I'm just thinking. I'd say, yeah, still, you know. I'd say it's still a it's it's still a mix for me, mix. Um, mm-hmm. because it also depends on. Again, like the cool thing about this is I have tools, um, especially when I'm tired. You know, then I'm tatang. <laughs> I'm like yeah, I'm yeah, injured. You want to you know, you're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be doing the lutang, and then my strikes are gonna be more linear, and all that. You know, maybe if I'm I'm not injured and my arms are like strong for the moment and then and my foot yeah. works better and then I could jump around and I feel more like, oh my god, I could still do yeah the footwork and all that and then fine. Like like one time I I did spar uh six years ago uh with, with a GM who a relatively young GM and the guy kinda like tried to box me towards like the benches because I was still faster with footwork. But then, you know, when, when he kind of like tried to get me to be uh, boxed on the on the benches, probably tried to corner me 
so he could easily attack me. No, I did like a reverse V to escape. And now, and I'm like, where did that come from? You know, I haven't done that in years, but yeah. it came out. You know, so so these are all tools that just comes out. Um, no, no, you've, 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 done, you've done your homework. You've done your, you know, you've you've eaten your broccoli for years, and it's in you. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. If you trained it enough, it's gonna. Yeah, hopefully you're right it's gonna be reflexive and come out hopefully all right we got another question from lance do you believe that sword training is still relevant relevant today practically speaking as compared to stick training okay the thing about sword training is it has a big carry over to stick fighting because it teaches you how to hold the weapon properly how to have the proper biomechanics so I believe Mangtani was correct way back during the 90s. He was very right. Uh, he told us, hey, get sword trainers if you want to improve with your stick. So I agree. I agree yeah. with that. And, and for early 90s. Alignment, yeah, alignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah in early 90s. Yeah, I, that's, I totally agree with that. You know, just alignment alone, you know. In the early 90s, the avail availability of trainers was almost, I'm just speaking from my experience, of course, almost non-existent. Yeah, we used wood trainers. Yeah, yeah, we, I mean, like, we used wood trainers, and it was, and we got them, because mm -hmm. luckily, one of our dad's employ, employees uh, was a good wood carver, and he did that on the side. We actually told him, like, hey, you're a good wood carver, can you carve us some bolos? Which he did. Yeah, his son was also a uh, FMA guy. And we actually sold some of those you know, to, to yes. the Doneta guys. Um, but prior to that, it, it was very, not not as prevalent back then. I was going to you guys, obviously there wasn't the hard plastic. So no, it was basically, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, even guys, non -existent. Um, yeah, even non-existent back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nobody would bring blunts. The only blunts I've ever seen in my life back uh -huh. then was like Tata holding uh -huh. them. I think those were provided by... Uh, I'm not sure if it was Mangromi who gifted it to him, but but yeah, he would bring them. He had a pair. He would walk around, um, and uh, yeah, those were the only blunts I've ever seen back then. Whatever Tatang held. <laughs> far as the gear, uh, I, I mean, far as the gear back then, like I know Edgar came up with this stuff, like what eighties in the eighties, late late eighties, probably eighty nine by then, and uh, and I and and, and from what I understand, it, it's a collaboration with June Drevelos, who was yeah. our master in Lameco. Uh, because June, June's more of the quiet guy, but he. I know, I wish he'd come quiet. on. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, he's, know, he's, uh, he was here uh, a couple of months ago. No, I, I know. I'll, I'll, he's, I'll still try. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's, in, uh, he's in the UK. Get, maybe. Get, interviewed, get interviewed, June. I, I, yeah. I've been cleaning him. He's in, he's in Glasgow, I think. So maybe our friend Tom might ping him yes. once in a while or pay him a visit just to, you know, it's a bit yeah, deep wide. Just, yeah, the so. thing is, it's just tough with a Mako. Like, I'm going to reach out to Bong Avia, but just, it's not like a dime a dozen. I mean, like, finding La Mako guys to interview, it's it's not. You know, you look at yeah. the backyard group, the original 15, Many of them, like you look at Ron Blicky, Mark Denny, Steve Remy, but they're not really doing pure Lameco anymore. So for the guys who are just teaching pure Lameco from the backyard curriculum, backyard group, David Gould, uh, Roger Agbolas, who I've had on, yeah. Felix, thank God, before he passed away. So I'm going to try to get Bong Avia. I'm still working on, you know, Dino and Ariel Flores. But outside of that, it's not like it's really – you know the numbers are you know are that prevalent it's really not you know yeah, yeah. and then that would have been good too and and i don't know maybe that's another good story for another episode for us sometime in the future was just the uh the tournament scene and we and the lameco participation in the philippines because there was a lameco team in the philippines and and his um his compare or his is uh how would you decide um Licknick. I, I'm the godfather of this. Yeah, he's daughter. the godfather of his daughter for for uh, baptism. Um, mm -hmm. was, was uh, and Lance knows him too. Um, was the overall champion, and he was the national team as well. For, 
three, three or five man national yeah, champions. Yeah, because the Southeast Asian Games had Arnis in there um, for the circuits. And I think he qualified to be an alternate for, yeah. yeah. yeah so back then, it, it was a festive uh, atmosphere, and, and I miss it because back then, you know, you'd see all the GMs coming and coming in one common place and yeah and especially for the ki community where there's four or five teams with with the different and so it's usually pedring romo yuli romo uh the lameco team and tony jago's team uh lightning Lightning was there lightning had to be there the lightning is not ki so but but they're always there yeah definitely yeah the lightning was there right then yeah, yeah. Once in a while they do. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, he was asking. asking. Yeah, yeah, no, no, lightning, was, was, lightning was back there in the day. Uh, I hear Pedring, not to get way off topic here, but I keep hearing about Yuli's younger brother there, man. I hear he was yeah, something. Pedring, <laughs> Pedring, yeah. Yeah, but, but just to clarify, like, yeah, my brother was correct. Like, Lightning was always present in those. Yeah, I heard Lightning was always. Yeah. On, on the Arnis Philippine side, yeah, it, it was different. It was more of the Lanada teams, the Laulans. Yes, because if you compete in one league. tournament, league, you can't compete in another. So, oh, okay. Right. It was an issue back then. Yeah. So, but, but what was cool back then, just, just within the KI community, was like, of course, there's four teams fielded with the different guys, Pedring and all those other guys that have their own teams. Um, so whenever we get trophies, of course, Tatang would be on stage to receive it and have photos All right. with the whole clan of sorts. So yeah, it was a very festive. I was gonna say, yeah, I know. Huh? Those days, it's just so sad. Like they're were, they're were gone. I mean, I mean, gosh, with the passing of GM Rene Latosa, when I look at like quote unquote first generations, you know, whatever. I mean, like who's left? I mean, GT. Well, besides GT, who? Um, the, oh, the, the the older gentleman in California is still. Uh, the name is escaping me now. He's in his nineties, actually. Um, oh, I forget his name, but he's he's still around. But there's only like I I don't know. I don't know if there's even like on two hands, as far as counting. I don't know. You know, it's, yeah, it's that age range. Yeah, it's too bad. Too bad. You know um but uh so what um here we go what uh so what do you you know you guys have seen enough what's going on at ptk community i mean it's obviously no shocker (laughs) so what i mean like what's your guys message to the ptk community you know as far as like what could be helpful insightful i mean you guys got any words of wisdom yeah i mean like i think like um i'm between the two of us i'm the more i'm not i'm not that social even but as compared to him i'm the more social guy on social media let's put it that way um because he's also busy with his profession i am busy too but i just tend to be more you know active on well, all i'm trying to be less out right. there right? i'm telling you yeah. <laughs> it gets yeah. exhausting yeah yeah but but luckily you know we were all on that chat group amongst pt gay guys and, and yeah I mean, like it was a good conversation um, so. because, like, especially with, with, with jack's message of like you know we were all given gifts it's just our own way of like uh expressing uh, or sharing what was taught to us and teach it as it is you know there's no point in saying what's better or not it is what it is you know this mm. was not Calitron's way of teaching was the way it was taught to us you know it's right or wrong it's ours but we're open to like teaching it to people who want to learn like hey how was the Calitron way great sure um, um, because it that was the only I would say like Honestly, it was painful for me back then being a kid. You know, I'm a teenager back then. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about decades ago. Of course, this is all like water under under the bridge. But being young back then, it was tough because like, you know, I'd have like PTK guys I've never even met back then and ask me like, hey, so what is GT teaching you or Leo or Tuhon or whatever? 
and I tell them like this or that, and and I get comments like, oh, maybe you're being taught wrong or you're you're not listening. Oh yeah, that's a big thing, because, huh? Because it's not the Pekiti that they understand. Mm. And and what I'm trying to tell people, and I think what people have eventually realized was that the Leo of of the Leo guy of the one probably who was in New York or in Texas or in Manila in the 90s or in Bacolod or wherever or the global traveling 80 year old GT right now were all different expressions of Leo through his time. Yeah, the you know? evolution. I mean, what built yeah. like, and that, that goes to, I mean, you know, and again, I don't claim to be a PTK guy, but through the interviews, you obviously see, look at Bill, to on Bill McGrath, what he does. And you look at some of the others, I mean, it's, it's clearly different, you know? Yeah. So. And, and, and I think like, I'm glad I got to meet finally to on Bill for the first time after all the chatting online. Oh, well, I, so that must have been like right before you left, right? few hours <laughs> I, I was having second thoughts of going because like i still needed to pack and i'm like oh i have my flight and then it's a 15 hour flight to korea uh but then i thought you know i'm like hey bill's just here 15 mm. minutes away from where i am right now i'll take the chance whatever maybe i'll just not sleep and pack no i, I and, tell you the flights yeah. weren't I, I did want to come just you know again just to meet meet and greet and all that but i remember seeing yeah, him yeah. and like because i'm thinking like wow he's there but he's going to film huh. yeah, yeah so so i'm so I'm, I'm, I'm glad i did because yeah. then i posted my experience and i just said like yeah you know um even if i don't carry the banner officially as ptk i still consider myself as ptk being part of the PTK family, and we all are, you know, I, I still consider you guys all brothers, regardless of factions. We're yeah. all brothers. I mean, like, you hate each other or like each other, we're still brothers, no matter what. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to learn about what you've been taught, great, or maybe I'm not interested to learn, that's fine too, or maybe you're not inter interested to learn what I'm, I learned, that's fine too. But if somebody wants to learn what I learned, fine, I'm open to to, to share, you know, and then show like, yeah, this is the way it was done before. And if you want me to teach you, I'll teach you. Um, or could you share me some stories? Sure. This is what I understand and what I remember from what happened. Maybe somebody else remembers it differently. Yeah. Um, but this yeah. is what I remember. Right. So, um, so, so that's what I'm willing to do. And what I'm happy to do is to share what I remember and what I understand based from what I remember and I understand that's what I was taught. Mm. Um, and everybody's, you know, especially for us living in the US, you know, we're free. <laughs> like, it's a capitalistic society to do whatever you want. Just don't Let's hope it anymore. stays that way. But you know what I mean? Like, uh, no, I do know what I mean. I just, I had to put that in there. But I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, call, call, call your team, whatever it is, call your thing, whatever you is, it is. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is my experience. It is what I understand. It is what I, this is what I remember. You know, you can't call it wrong for being different. The same way I can't call what you're doing wrong from different being different. Um, maybe that's what at that time GT said was the most explosive uh, modern system back then. So. And again, we're brothers and sisters in the art, um, in PTK. Um, so let's just enjoy the camaraderie for now and do our own at the side. You know, like my brother and I, you know, we're, we're together in the martial arts, but he has his own profession. I have my own profession. We don't mm. care whatever we do and whatever. So yeah, likewise, man. you know, you do your stuff with your school. I do my stuff with my school. You know, once in a while, let's all hang together and talk about stories. And, and then just just build it from there. Sounds good to me. I mean, you know, it's just obviously it's been said numerous times, but obviously more in common than differences, right? Um, all right. Oh, another question from Lance. I think you guys already and you guys might already answer this actually. Why did you stop training in PTK? Was it because GT was sending more, spending more time in the US? You guys, I think you guys answered just like this. Yeah, yeah, it was life for you. Life, yeah. Yeah, and you moved to the 
U.S. So. Yeah, I already left, and there was a, and I didn't get to talk to him. I know he did send me an email once, and I replied, and he didn't respond. That was on the first or second year I was out. But then, yeah, he and I never got to talk at all or chat at all for decades until we, when he was with Jade and we spoke on the phone while he was on the car. Mm. And I'm like, whoa, I couldn't realize this was like, it's been 20 uh, decades already. And, and yeah, his, his last thing was just like, yeah, he was telling me, move back to the Philippines, come over here and, you know, uh, that uh, things are better now in the Philippines and, and there's a lot of opportunity for martial arts and not only here, but abroad, you know, and, but then, yeah, but it's just hard to um, contact him. So I'm just like, okay. And I like, if yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping doors open or whatever, but, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm also a busy person. It's hard to, he's hard to track. Um, but, but yeah, you know, just, I'm just what glad that he and I got it. At least you're talking to him now. You know what I mean? That's yeah, yeah. So I'm just glad he got to speak with me. And then also, you know, I'd love to share this to you too. That you know, lately I've been getting messages from people from different ETK groups, you know, DMs and just saying hello. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow, I haven't even met this guy, I haven't even met that guy, or and they're saying hello to me, which I yeah. find great. And I've also been invited to some of their events. I'm like, wow, you know, this is happening now. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that's a positive. Nice. That's a positive thing. Um, I would say. Yeah. And right. and I think, and I think people were also also just also waiting for me to also open up, because they also didn't probably know how I kinda stood as regards to my PTK uh, life. Um, yeah. And I think like those those kind of posts where I mention everyone as brothers and and meeting with. To on Bill and other PTK guys once in a while, I think helps to show people that yeah, I'd love to see everyone, <laughs> talk to everyone. So yeah. yeah, hopefully, I think with the younger generation, I think it's going to happen. I, I or I should say, I think it'll improve. Status quo will improve. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if it'll ever ever go away, but I think status quo will improve. Yeah, and one thing that I'm happy about is I'm also back to chatting once in a while with. To on Romel and Donoy. Mm. He's who I nice. I'm on a show. Yeah Facebook. yeah, Facebook is a very great tool. Without mm -hmm. Facebook, I wouldn't have gotten back with these guys who I haven't communicated at all for decades. So yeah, it is. It's part of it. It is yeah. a great tool for yeah, you know, to get in touch with people that you haven't heard or spoken to in a while, for sure. Um, what are future goals for each of you in your respective training, teaching? What's uh so, uh, Guru Sixto, what's your future goals for yourself in training or teaching? What have you? Uh, right now, because of COVID, I have, I have to catch up on a lot of things right now. So, I really can't say. <laughs> I can't say what my future is. Uh, there are some, of course, right now, I'm training a lot with Master Arnold. Uh, Master Arnold Tarza, so he's the guy who spent the most time training in now. But as ever, the researcher, I I think you know it, I'm also studying another system, right? Uh, a one knife system. And finally, I I may have time for ammo. Uh, 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 I, uh, I might have time for that maybe later this year or. Uh, I, I, as far as teaching, I don't know. I, I don't know. Because uh, personally, I just want to teach people so I can train them. So yeah. that's my, that's the way, Henry, that's just me. That's, that's just me. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yes. How about you, Guru Baste? Same question. Yeah, it's the ever changing, you know, like mark <laughs> or target. Um, because things things change a lot in, in my regard because, um, you know, I thought San Francisco to me would be the last stop because I've moved around so many cities and states in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I think I know more about America than the average. American, American right? Average. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's why with all the all the differences in politics, all the differences in everything else, you know, I'm like, I understand this side too because I live with them. I understand this side too because I lived with them. So I'm like, yeah. it's kind of confusing. Uh, 
hard to choose, but but yeah. Uh, but but then COVID also uh, hit my job in San Francisco, and mm. I would say luckily, you know, I'm back in Atlanta, you know, which I thought I would be leaving forever, but I'm back to be a southerner and uh, reestablishing my my network there in the south. Okay. Um, but but now um yeah like as regards to teaching um yeah i'm, I'm reestablishing kiro for the southeast oh, um, sure. and working on that uh as regards to further future goals uh, of course that and ch and just to make things clear like we do distinguish between carlos hermanos fma and mm-hmm. the rest of what we do although carlos hermanos may have influences and attributes taken from our experiences from other arts it's still a distinct thing um but when i teach kiro or i teach Piketty, i teach it the way or or the campo it, those are three things i would like to teach in the well firstly kiro i'm actively teaching right now and i'm reestablishing uh probably meetups also that's open for people who want to drive from different parts of the southeast come up with one Sunday of the month or one Sunday every two months, whoever wants to drive over will spend the whole day doing camp and come back uh, if you don't have a local team leader. So I am active with Kiro. Uh, future goals would probably be um, teaching PTK and the camp as well as separate mm-hmm. modules as they were taught to me. So it's not I PTK. Yeah, that's not as prevalent yeah. as the you know yeah because like people who ask like is this the campo uh bas- de campo? no i'm like i'm teaching this a separate module because people ask mm-hmm. me how were you taught by uh all of this well this is exactly how it was taught to me since you're curious here it is yeah. right then eventually you know there's also the i would say like the ch which is my take on ch de campo which is a separate module i know it, it may sound confusing but but what i'm just saying is like if i want to teach the traditional systems the way they were that's what i'm going to give to the people especially with kiro which i would see is more of like a legacy kind of art um there's a lot of traditional stuff going around with ptk people want to learn how how did gahe teach you before like you were asking us in terms of um uh calibron's way of training that's the way i'm going to show it um just just so people know how you know yeah, like like yeah. when people want to the people want to eat authentic thai food in thailand that's the real thai food not not the american thai american version <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, that's my own take and on possibilities for the future no yeah, that, those are those are enough, man. <laughs> yeah. You know? uh, well, this has been great. I, I appreciate you both coming on and making this happen. I know you're leaving Sunday at noon, so I know it was a tight schedule to work with. So I appreciate you and Sixto coming together and making this happen. I know I didn't I didn't give the most notice, so <laughs> so um, I just saw that you guys were together out there, and I kind of just jumped on a hopeful opportunity. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having us again. Oh uh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Again, we... it's, uh, somewhere you close. Uh, give me a second. Sure. Somebody is. Uh... It's it's there CT. No, just kidding. Yeah, I think no, that's probably the. Uh, I ordered a whole like uh, roast Four. roast boar. Um, it's actually wild. It's not. It's supposed to be wild boar, but it's already farmed, so oh, right. it can't boar wild. Awesome. But uh, wow. it's been delivered for my dad's birthday. But but yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, it's a rare. I know. I I didn't even realize yeah. it until you sent the invite. I'm like, it's rare for us to be together. It's even That's rare. Right, yeah, for I us wanted to capitalize together. that you guys were together. I thought it'd be really neat. So since you guys are there, I'm like, look, well, let's just make this happen. So um, yeah. But yeah, you guys. I mean, again, assuming I'm going to keep doing this, um, I mean, it's fair to say you guys will be back on. Yeah, we, we can cover the, I definitely would, I definitely would like to cover uh, with you guys and whoever else you think may be suitable as um, far as the tournament days back then. I, that'd be kind of neat, you know? Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and again, just to avoid confusion, there, there's also different eras because, you know, I uh, I was also with a call with some other groups and they were saying like, you know, well, the only things that were active was this, this, and this. And I was like, oh, that was probably after this era I was thinking of. So I wouldn't mm-hmm. say he's wrong, but, but yeah, just to avoid confusion, just, just FYI. Yeah, yeah, I think it would just be neat to hear for people to hear about the tournament, who was there, and the teams represented. I just say, need just to hear about it. Yeah. Yeah, and the and the different leagues. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, it sounds like it's something that's sadly gone now, and you know, and hey, what better way to bring it up from you guys? You know, uh, talking on it. You know what I mean? That you guys were there. So, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, hey, have a very safe flight home, and. Um, and as always, good to see both of you. And again, thanks for making this happen on very short notice so, on my part. So, All right, sir. I'll make it there soon and hope to see you in person soon. I, I thought yeah, that was going to be the week. Yeah, yeah, you're out, on so. East Coast now, so <laughs> no excuse. You know what I mean? <laughs> All righty. All right, guys. You guys take Signing care. Okay, stay yeah. safe. Stay safe. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Gotcha. You take care. All right, that concludes 298. And uh, yeah, that was a good interview. And uh, yeah, thank you, Lance, for the questions. Um, appreciate it. And uh, so who's next? I'm thinking some Jeff Finder. I'm still trying to iron that out for uh, Sunday. That would be a Kabbalist, which we're trying to make more of a point to cover. And after that, um, I think I'd be bringing Renee Thompson back on. Um, Shel Kuzma is coming on soon. Steve LaFray, uh, Frank Dello came out with a book. Uh, so just a few names that for the rest of the month, uh, that we'll be getting on here and uh, and all that. So, again, if you have not already, please subscribe to my discussion for all the monies you receive go to charity. And on that note, guys, I will see you next time. Yeah, I would love for him to come on, Lance. I've been trying <laughs> for a good two years. I'm going to try uh, Guru Bong Abia. Um, I'm going to see if he'll come on. Matter of fact, before I forget, I'm going to send him a message right now while it's on my mind. But I'm going to tr- try to get him on. But, yeah, I would love if he would come on. That would be that would be fantastic. But so far, no luck. You know, but I guess it can't hurt to keep trying. <laughs> All right, all. Have a good night.